It's that time of year. Time to start thinking about what you want to accomplish in 2023. And guess what? This is the year, the year that you create your best training yet. Today, we're going to look at what trends you can expect in this next year, and we're going to look at how you can incorporate these trends into your learning and design department. And it doesn't matter if you're leading an entire team or if you're just a department of one. These tips are going to help you create training that's going to help you meet your goals. The learning landscape is changing. And what this means for us as leaders is that we need to be prepared for 2023 and what that's going to bring. So why are we planning now? Well, planning now is the difference between running a proactive learning department and a reactive learning department. In a proactive department, we're planning ahead and we're getting prepared for the trainings that we know people within our organization are going to need. So let's take a look at four trends that are going to be coming up in 2023 and you can start thinking ahead now and how you're going to prepare for when these hit your organization. But before we dive in, I want to invite you to subscribe to my channel, Create Better Training. I really want to grow this channel so that each week I can continue to share with you some information on things you can do to create better training. And there's gonna be really simple tips that you can incorporate into what you're already doing in your learning and design profession and in your learning and design department so that you can create better training for the people in your organization and reach your training goals. So let's dive in. The first trend leaders need to be aware of is that a healthy learning culture begins with you and in your learning department. So we know by now that the culture of any organization is set by its leaders, and we have research that proves this again and again. So it makes sense that the learning culture of an organization is going to begin with the learning leadership, and that's you. So it's, just, it's very important that as you plan for 2023, you really want to make sure that you almost begin with what kind of training plan you're going to create for your leadership. Um, or maybe you're not creating it, maybe you're bringing it in-house, but you want to align leadership training to the big goals your organization is setting for 2023, and then be involved with bringing in the right training to help leaders be prepared to reach those goals. And that's not just for the CEO and the CFO and those positions. That goes for you as well. You need to be sure that you have a plan for what type of professional development you're going to need. And if you have a team, what professional development are they going to need to be prepared for 2023? So like many organizations, I'm sure one of your goals next year is probably going to be attracting new talent. And if you have a learning plan in place, that can be a huge benefit that HR and recruiting can use to help you attract prospects. So the way this works is that your learning plan should be a mix of the current training that you're already offering or that you're planning to offer. But you also want to start bringing in um, some more personalized options as well. Now, the great thing about using a personalized approach, it doesn't mean that you are going to be in charge of creating that training. Maybe you decide to create it in-house, but with a personalized approach, you can set up some kind of process or system where employees can go out and identify a training and then it can be approved and maybe even paid for by the organization. So as long as you know it's reaching the goals that you set for 2023, then it takes the pressure off of you, but it's really um, allowing your employees to go out and find training that they see valuable. And so some common places you can look is LinkedIn Learning. You can partner with a local training company or with a local university or community college or you know there's just so many places online like Udemy and Eduflow that you can look to to help you create kind of this personalized learning plan. 
So our second trend that leaders in learning should look out for in 2023 is there really is going to be more emphasis on learning equals retention. So we just talked about how we know that learning can help us attract new talent, but it can also help us to retain the talent that we already have. And in an article by Training Industry, Michelle Eggleston and Ken Taylor say developing career pathways and connecting learning to career advancement opportunities can enable employees to grow and stay with the company long term. Well, that makes perfect sense because most people don't want to leave their jobs, especially if they see that there's an opportunity to grow. They know that they could be promoted at some point and they see a future in that company and learning, having a learning plan is a great way to lay it out like a roadmap for your employees so that they can see what opportunities exist. Now, I know this is a tall order. How do we create a learning plan that shows how you get from one uh, role at your organization to all these other roles that are available? Well, start small, okay? Start by taking an inventory. And so one of the easiest things you can do is first survey your employees, ask them what they want related to their job roles ask questions in this survey about, you know, do you want to continue to grow? What do you, what would be your ideal position uh, in 10 years? Do your research, find out what it is that your employees want. And then once you ha see what the top positions are that are listed, like let's say one of them is a management position, start there. Start by at looking at the job description, what skills, what requirements are needed to, you know, have this management role and then create a learning pathway. What classes, what trainings, what would someone have to have to reach that role? Some of that's going to be some of your in house training. Some of that may include having a degree or a certification from an outside, uh, you know, provider, but map it out for someone. Think of like a timeline. You have to have all of these things in place and that's going to help someone to see the steps they need to take to be able to move up into that position. Don't forget to also include proficiencies for that role and um, what am I trying to say? Like uh, job evaluations have to be at a certain level. Like you definitely don't want to map that out and someone does all the steps, but like their job evaluations are not good. So you wanna make sure you build in also that you have a certain percentage on job evaluations that people are meeting. So anyway, that's just one idea. Work with HR, make sure you're following all of the guidelines and the rules that are required, but that will get you started with creating this learning pathway. And once you do that, present it to the, your leadership, your HR department, and let them see how you can lay out learning pathways for all of the different roles. And this may be a multi-year goal for you, but this is an easy way to get started with that. So trend number three that learning leaders need to look out for is they need to be prepared to create training that helps employees now. All right, so in 2022, and basically starting from the point that we all began coming back after the pandemic, we saw this trend of employee-driven learning, and that's going to continue in 2023. So what that means is employees are speaking out and they are letting us know when training is a waste of time. So if it's not working for them, they're just not doing it. They're not completing the training. They're not showing up. They're not applying what they're learning. You're finding you're having to do a lot of retraining. All of that, if you start seeing that showing up in multiple people, not just one or two, but multiple people, that is employee-driven learning. People are showing you with their actions that they are not um, finding the value in the training that they're going through. So in 2023, we're really going to be under pressure in learning and design to start creating training that is relevant and that can be used now. It's all about helping people solve their problem in real time. So what does this mean? 
So it means that we need to make sure we're providing training and training materials that are easy to access. They provide an immediate solution and it allows employees to learn while they're doing their job. So when I say this, here's my warning. I'm not saying that all training needs to be moved online because not every training needs to be offered online. Not every training needs to be offered in person. What this does mean though, is that if you are doing any kind of in-person training or virtual led training, you're going to need to make sure that you have support in place. And that support can be in the form of job aids, materials, um, learning communities. Those things need to be in place so that they support the learner so that they can access it anytime and anywhere, and they can get help to solve their problems. Having an online platform is a really easy way uh, to accomplish this, and that platform needs to be something that can be used both on the computer desktop, laptop, or on their smartphone, their tablet, and any kind of mobile device. So on the job training and resources, they're really going to become a staple in all training in 2023. It doesn't matter how that training is provided. You're going to see a demand for materials that support the employees so that they can begin using the information immediately. And why are we seeing this trend now? Well, in the post-pandemic world, working is so much more flexible than it was before. Even if you return to an office, there's still a lot of flexibility out there. And so that means that we're going to have more employees who are working away from that traditional office space. And so that's what's driving support that employees are looking for to do their job. Also, they're leaving jobs, they're moving into new roles, uh, there's hiring sprees. So that means that employees are kind of having to hit the ground running. So they need information fast. So some examples of this are um, if you have an employee that is working from home and you just recently implemented a new software and everybody had to sit through a three hour training, the employee may be using that software and have a single question. Well, it's not fair and they're not going to go back and sit through a three hour training again just to get an answer to that one question. So having job aids, having like a one sheet PDF, a printout, something that they can refer to is going to help them implement that information faster. That's just one example. I mean, sales representatives and people who are out in the field, they always can benefit from having training materials that are going to help them do their job, like overcoming objections in sales or information on the newest product or information on the competitive product that they're up against. If they could access that from their smartphone, their tablets or anything like that while they're out in the field trying to get sales, that's only going to help them do their job better. So remember, in 2023, you're really going to be expected to create tools and materials that support employees so they can solve their problems in real time. Okay. The fourth trend that I'm going to talk about that L&D leaders should look out for in 2023 is incorporating coaching into learning. Okay, so this is new, but I don't think it's going away anytime soon. I've seen it um, being used since 2018, and every year it seems to pick up momentum, and I think this next year is going to be huge. I think you're going to see this talked about a lot. So the idea here is how do we make training more effective? All right, so we've taught someone how to do something, but there's a missing piece be between I've taught you, now go do it. You need that support to apply what you've learned and then have the space to figure out, is it working? Are you doing it correctly? And all of the things that happen there, you know, when you're learning to do something new. Well, one way to build that support piece in is to build in coaching. So you can do coaching um, kind of two different ways. You can do one-on-one -on -one coaching where you have people meet with a coach 
um, before, during, after the training and actually work on setting goals and applying the information they just learned. But you can also do this as like a small group as well. And so I really believe in coaching in training. I think it is the key to motivate learners to take action. And so I always implement it into the trainings that I oversee and design. And so when you're bringing in that coaching, I also like to take that approach I talked about a minute ago of anytime, anywhere support. So I like to set up a, an online learning community and coaching is a part of that community. So that community is a place for learners to connect to one another, but coaching can also be a part of that. You can use many different uh, tools to help you do this. Slack is one that I use a lot. I also use the Learning Zen LMS. Um, to build in that community there. And I make sure that the coach and the facilitator have a place where they can also coach. So the way that works is the coach may go in and ask a question in the online learning community and um, the learners need to go in and they need to answer that. And then they can actually work together in real time to talk about what's working, what questions you have, if you failed, what that looks like. And the coach, that's such a great coaching moment. The coach can step in and they can like walk through, you know, what uh, the learner could have done differently. And it's something that everybody can benefit from. So again, you can do that as a small group or you can do that as one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but having that learning community and having a coach is going to be huge in 2023. And I think we're going to see more and more of that um, become the norm in learning as you know the years go on so while these trends are pretty positive it does mean that there's going to be some big changes in your organization and in your learning and development department but don't let that overwhelm you so I have created a free tool that's going to help you get started with implementing some of these tools like setting up the learning community, setting up a place for coaching, uh, surveying your learners, finding out what the problem is. And so the resource I've created for you is called Five Steps to Better Training. It's a free course and you can use this to start incorporating some of these trends in 2023 and create better training for your organization. So the nice thing about this course is it's only 15 minutes a day. I send a video and a worksheet directly to your inbox, and I introduce you to the five-step process, which is known as the Learner Focus Framework. And for seven days, you're gonna use this, you're gonna work through it, and it's really gonna help you to start understanding some of, the, some of the steps you can take to incorporate these trends and create this proactive learning and design department in 2023. Okay, so sign up in the description below or there is a link on my YouTube channel uh, right at the top of the page that you can click on to sign up for the free course. So thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you in the new year, but just in case you wanna learn a little bit more, check out the next video that's going to give you more information on how to create better training.